my name is Jason J. Rock Houston. This is Chaos Chris TV, and we got the members of Severed Angel. Um, I love that name, guys. It's so um, kind of metal. Um, why don't we go over room around the um, room and everybody introduce themselves? Hey, what's up? My name is Wayne Noon, and I am the drummer of Severed Angel. Hi, Wayne. Uh, um, talk about your influences as far as uh, being a drummer. I mean, um, who was the guy for you? Um, I, I've said this a lot. I'm not a huge fan of drummers. I, wow, I, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I hate drummers. They, they all suck. But he hates uh, no, <laughs> I do hate myself. But no, um, I was more of a fan of guitar players. But as far as drummers go, the ones that I actually do like, uh, Mickey D from uh, King Diamond and Motorhead. He was like one one of the drummers that really stood out to me a lot. Yeah, can't go wrong played. with him. And now he's in the Scorpions, right? Um, quick question yeah. for you, Wayne. Um, since you brought it up, um, how how is it that you're a drummer and and you're not much of a fan of drums? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I just. You know what it is? I started off playing guitar when I was younger. And, um, you know, I just, like I've mentioned too, uh, when I was playing guitar, when I was on a guitar lesson, this guy comes in the room and he starts playing uh, drums. I'm like, oh my God, what's that big sound I hear behind me? I, I want to play that instead. Yeah. And I always want to play drums because, just because it's loud and annoying. Yeah. You know? I, see, I see you got like a huge CD collection. I love that. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm a CD collector. I'm a, I'm a collector of music, so I got CDs. I got records over here. And I'm an old school guy. I love I love like having physical product as opposed to you know having to download yeah. a file. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at the uh, artwork record, and everything. But okay, uh, now, guitar players always interested me a lot, so I just always gravitated more towards guitar players for some reason. And now we know a little more about um, who Wayne is. Why don't we talk to Lou and give us an introduction of who you are, Lou? Greetings and salutations. I'm Lou Mavs. I'm the lead guitarist of Severed Angel. And, and talk about some of your influences guitar-wise. Well, my Mount Rushmore, uh, the four most important um, guitars for me were Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath, Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, and Richie Blackmore. So uh, those are the four guys that were responsible for uh, getting me really interested uh, in learning the instrument. Uh, in terms of songwriting, um, I have to give that credit to Steve Clark of Def Leppard, uh, Def oh, Leppard, wow. especially uh, their first three albums. And I love Hysteria too, but High and Dry is my go-to Def Leppard album. So yeah, it's interesting because mm -hmm. Def Leppard. I mean, if you go back and you listen to those first two Def Leppard albums, they were almost a full-blown on metal band. Of course, they they became uh, much more of a um, hard rock pop band. But but I love everything they've done. And you're so right about um, Steve Clark. He died so tragically young, but you know. Um, if you look at all the albums he played on, um, not only was his guitar playing phenomenal, but he was um, he was one of the principal songwriters. And even as a songwriter, you know, he put his stamp all over those Def Leppard songs. Yeah, yeah. Totally, I mean, totally he missing. was he was a guitarist that made me realize, you know what, you know, you can write a you can write a riff, you can write a hard rock riff, but you know, if it doesn't have melody, it uh, you know, it, it it won't stand out. You know, like he he made me realize. Like all those, all those five guitar players definitely made me realize the importance of a melodic riff. And, yeah. you know, it's as a kid seeing Steve Clark, you know, with his, you know, long uh, blonde hair, you know, throwing yeah. his Les Paul around, you know, it was, it was really inspiring. So, yeah. Um, I mean, you mentioned Iomi. I mean, who's not an Iomi fan? He, he basically created the metal sound. And the interesting thing, if you know anything about his story, I mean, he plays basically the way he does because, you know, he was involved in a freak accident where the tip of his fingers got cut off. And uh, I mean, just think about that for a minute. Um, Black Sabbath might not sound the way, you know, it does if he hadn't had his tips of his fingers cut off. That's true. So, you know, you got to give uh, you also got to give credit to Django Reinhardt, the gypsy jazz guitarist, because yeah. that's who uh, Iomi was inspired by to pick up the guitar again when he uh, had the tips of his fingers yeah. cut off. And uh, let me just say, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting Tony Iommi on uh, two occasions, and both occasions he was such a gentleman. Like, you know, being able to say that I met my hero and that he was a total cool guy, you know, like, it made me realize, okay, I picked the right number one. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if he had been a had been a, um, a jerk, and, you know, and you thought, oh, man, my hero would have let down. <laughs> I probably would have said, uh, too bad I didn't cut both hands off, but I'm not going to say that. That's yeah, weird. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, again, with that, I mean, um, I mean, I, I think what an inspiring story. Most people will go through something like that, and they would be like, well, can't play the guitar anymore. I got to find something else to do. But he soldiered on and look at the career he's had. And then, um, 
you know, also kind of in the Sabbath family, Randy Rhodes, you mentioned, and, um, and I mean, it's amazing the legacy Randy's had, not that I doubt or question what a remarkable player he was, but um, yeah, and he wasn't quite right too, but he's basically known for those two Aussie albums. I mean, um, and then I guess you could also count um, the live tribute album, but um, basically those two studio albums, what he's known for. And I mean, look at the legacy he left. Well, I I actually own copies of the the Quiet Riot stuff, and you know you can hear it's Randy, yeah, yeah. Uh, but definitely when he went towards uh, Blizzard of Oz with Ozzy, um, a lot of that stuff was actually lifted from the two Quiet Riot albums and the string of demos that were never released until the Randy Rhodes years. Um, you could tell that a lot of that stuff came from those records, yeah. so. You know, the bedrock was there, but yeah. it definitely shined on yeah. those two Ozzy albums, especially for me, Diary of a Madman. So, oh, that, you know, yeah. uh, it, it, it's a legacy of quality, not quantity yeah. with him. And Alex, um, I, I understand you're, you're at work and you're kind of on a break right now. So we want to hear from you, too. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Hey, Jay. Yeah, I'm at work. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, I'm Alex Ripetti, lead singer of Severed Angel, and um, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you have the golden voice that everybody Don't tell us about. too much, Alex. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Sorry, how, about you, George? Um, how about you, George? Tell us a little about uh, who you are. Uh, George Demetri, I'm the bassist in Severed Angel. Okay, there now, let's really get into <laughs> you guys, now that we know who everybody is. Um, Severed Angel, I understand, and the album uh, album is going to come out in May. Um, so what's the official release date for that? And tell us a little bit about the album, what people can expect from it. Uh, well, the uh, actual release day is May 2nd, uh, digitally. Uh, CD-wise, I don't know what's going on right now. There's some stuff going on, but uh, May 2nd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, May 2nd, yeah, everybody can listen to it on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, whatever. Uh, I think it's on um uh, probably YouTube or something too. Who knows? It's just, hey, it'll be out there digitally, so you'll I, find it. I should it. just um, say... Um, can you imagine if you're able to download all those CDs in the background where you are on a digital file? But I'm like you. I'm an old school guy. I still love the um, old physical product. I mean, just give you an example. This is the latest thing I bought, Paul Gilbert's um, The Dio album. Man, anybody uh, like Lou, who was telling me he was a he's obviously a Black Sabbath Dio fan, Iommi fan. This is fun to check out because it's obviously Paul Gilbert's interpretation of uh, classic Ronnie James Dio songs. He covers Rainbow, Sabbath, yeah. Dio. And there's no vocals on any of the tracks. It's simply um, guitar interpretation. And what makes it interesting is, um, as I'm listening to the album, like um, I can practically close my eyes, even though there's no vocals, I can hear Ronnie James Dio singing the songs. Wow, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm getting to like the digital because I there's there's no choice now. I mean, yeah, in yeah. my new car, it has no CD player, and so I had no choice to embrace it, it, right? But um, yeah, the, exactly. thing, the, the thing that I embrace about it is like doing interviews and talking um to bands like you. If I don't have the album, there's a good chance that I can at least go check some of the stuff out on YouTube and get yeah, an exactly. idea of what the band sounds like. And so it's a it's a good thing there. Um, I think that's the problem. Sometimes you got to uh, be willing to embrace stuff, but um, you know, yeah. so um. So I understand too, the band um, kind of started out um, as a result that a couple of you guys had a podcast. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we don't have, we still have it. It's not going anywhere. It's called Rat Sound Review. It's, oh, it started in, uh, find it. yeah. <laughs> yep. Actually, ratsoundreview.com. It's on uh, YouTube as well. Actually, the main thing is YouTube. Uh, every Wednesday night, we go live at eight o'clock, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and you know, basically what same thing what you do, you know, we interview yeah. bands and uh talk about albums that you know that we loved as we were a child or albums that we love now or just you know random stuff like album versus album type things. And um, so at one point I've had like about five other co-hosts that I do the show with, and and some of them leave left over time. And then uh Lou I've known for over 20 years, and um he did a pod he still does his podcast, Music is Life um uh so you know being friends with lou i said you know i, I needed another co-host on here so you know would you want to come on and he said sure so okay, like a, uh, now that wayne's told us kind of that part of the story um how did you got how did you and wayne first meet like 20 years ago where do you guys hook up initially so wayne was in a band called phoenix rain and you know it was made up of people who were from my neighborhood of astoria queens um and uh 
a friend, a mutual friend of ours was the lead singer of that band. And through her, I met Wayne and everybody else. And uh, Wayne and I just hit it off. Uh, you know, I, I there was never any intention of eventually joining up with him to be in a band because, you know, the type of music that we were playing at the time was definitely two completely different genres. Like, yeah. you know, they were more traditional metal, power metal, whatever you want to call it. And we were doing more like metallic hardcore and things like that. So I was like, oh, there's no way in hell this kid would want to play with a guy like me because, you know, like I'm writing all these chugga, chugga, chugga riffs. And, you know, it just so ended up happening, though, that uh, 20 years later, you know, after uh, being friends yeah, uh, before being band members, you know, he kept on saying, hey, let's do something. Because, you know, we were doing a string of cover songs with George as our bassist and with Alex as the producer. And he even got to play on a couple of them, um, you know. Uh, when he brought up the opportunity to write original music at first I was reluctant because I was going through some um, personal um, issues at the time, nothing drug related yeah, yeah. or anything yeah, yeah. like that. It's just, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, so what happened was he was just like, you know, uh, why don't we try something out? You know, what's the last song you wrote? And the song that I sent him, which is dogs of war, which is track three on the CD. I said, can we do something with this? And he said, yes, we can. And then all of a sudden, like everybody started putting their parts together and it kind of snowballed into that. And yeah. that's really the impetus of what started Severed Angel. Um, Wayne wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> uh, and so, George, um, as Lou just described there, you've been around um, since um, they started out doing the covers. What was that like to, um, you know, hook up with these guys and you start out playing the covers and then it morphs into let's do our own original music? It was great. I mean, we were having fun doing these covers. We would just select covers here and there and, and we would record them. And somehow it just evolved into doing original stuff. We were all like, yeah, you know, it'd be neat if we wrote some stuff. And again, uh, Lou had already had a song that he had written years ago and he can elaborate more on the origins of that. And uh, that basically became our first song written, Dogs of War. And oh, wow. from there, the ideas kept flowing and we just kept writing. And here we are. And um and Alex, let me um, ask you to jump in. You obviously um, don't suffer from lead singer disease. I, you, you seem like you're a quiet guy with uh, a group. So let's talk a little bit about um, you know the process as far as you writing your lyrics. Sure. Um, yeah, well, I'll backtrack even just a, a touch and um, say that I'm actually new to being a singer. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I only really started singing uh, at the beginning of 2022. And uh, Wayne and Lou heard a song that I released and uh, asked me to join the band. So I never really actually was planning to pursue it. But when they asked me, I figured I'd give it a try and uh, I definitely enjoy it. So um, let me um, ask you, prior to hooking up with these guys, did you have any kind of musical talent? Did you play any kind of other instruments that you ever played in a band before? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've been um, playing in bands since I was 16, so about 20 years. And um yeah, I, I'm I'm mostly uh, known for playing bass and guitar. Oh. So how surprised were you when the um you know they they ask you to hey would you mind being the singer for our band? I mean um must have been somewhat of a, a shock and did that take you a while once you guys started laying down the vocals like for you to um, get comfortable in hearing your voice back? Um, you know. I have to say that um, working with these guys has been one of the most pleasant musical experiences I've had. So it actually felt really natural to just dive right in and uh, start laying down vocals on day one. And uh, and we haven't stopped since. <laughs> and, and I would imagine um, you know, being that you, you're not typically like a guy that's been singing all his life, this is um, kind of a different perspective. I mean, um, I imagine in your previous bands where you're up on stage or you're doing your thing on the bass, um, you, can, you kind of can just move around on stage. But when you're the front man, all eyes are on you, you know, and everybody's, um, you know, everybody's um, listening to you sing, sing the songs and everything. Um, that's got to be quite a, um, a change. It's a huge change. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, going from a bassist to the, the lead vocalist is about as far a jump as you can go. Yeah. Uh, I think unless if you're someone like, you know, Getty Lee or something, I don't think usually people are watching the basses too closely. Yeah, and, um, and I'd imagine being the singer, you're a little more involved now with the, the lyrics. Let's talk about um, that. I'd imagine um, even going from being a bass player to a singer, um, that would hopefully make you a better writer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
lyric writing is something that I only really started doing maybe in the last three or four years. I started contributing some lyrical ideas to other bands that I'm in. And, um, but it was never something I like planned to pursue as like the main thing that I do. Yeah. But uh, since joining Severed Angel, uh, I, I write lyrics to songs like, I don't know, practically every week I, at I this mean, point. I, I imagine um, you don't have to write the lyrics, but I imagine as a singer, um, if you're singing songs that you write the words to, you can kind of sing it more from the heart, you know? I mean, you could probably do just as good a job if, you know, Lou or, or um, you know, Wayne wrote the songs or George, but um, I think you can feel, you know, it's a little different when you're singing songs that you wrote or, uh, you know, words that you wrote. That's probably true. Yeah. Um, one thing I'll say is that um, everyone in the band has contributed some lyrics. Um, which is cool, yeah. um, but everyone is very easygoing about me adjusting them to like sort of suit what I think should be sung by my voice. So yeah. it's worked out very collaborative. I mean, I mean, I dig, I dig bands like that. You look at bands like, um, you know, Kiss or the Beatles. I mean, those are bands that um, you know more than one guy sings, more than one guy contributes to the songwriting. And I, mm -hmm. I think when you have bands like that. Um, you know, you have different influences come in as opposed to one guy that does, you know, practically everything and everybody else in the band is just, you know, hired hand. Um, so Lou, let's talk now about the band's name. I always love to ask people about, you know, how did you come up with such a cool sounding band name? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so at the time that the band was uh, formed, you know, it was around uh, spring 2022 uh, when we're not a political or religious band, so we don't want people to uh mistakenly think of yeah. severed angel as somewhat politically aligned or with this ideology or that ideology we're five different individuals who just come together to write good music that's great um, but at, at the time uh you know things in the united states especially seemed very uh divisive polarizing if you will yeah, yeah. and uh i'm always trying to think of like you know synonyms so i'm always on thesaurus.com so like i put in the search engine polarizing viewpoint what happened was severed angle came up okay. and uh i messaged to the guys i'm like guys is this a stupid band name severed angle and then all of a sudden alex and i have to thank autocorrect for this because this was one of the few times where autocorrect worked on it worked in our favor he responded severed angel and i said that's it and then all of a sudden like the uh wheels in my head started going and i thought about like you know what is an angel you know an angel and uh, you know different yeah, yeah. cultures is a is like a protector or guardian yeah. and severed you know is someone uh, you know who's been bloodied bruised beaten yeah. scarred so i was thinking of the severed angel as like the ultimate underdog type thing yeah, you know like yeah. the the protector that's had his ass beat but still gets up to like you know destroy its enemies you know so yeah. i uh, think metal fans could kind of you know relate to that because you know metal um Metal has always been kind of, um, you know, the underdog and pe people that listen to it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's interesting you talk about the the name and the imagery. Like I've heard um, Geezer Butler talk about the fact that um, he's a real um, heavy, you know, um, Christian. But he said that he always played with imagery, the Black Sabbath name and always made point to wear a cross. And people can always question him, like, what are you, a devil worshiper? Are you a Christian? What are you? And he's like, I kind of like that. People aren't sure. <laughs> they question it, you know. And yeah. that's why Black Sabbath's all black and everything and makes people think, oh, are they devil worshippers? What are they? But um, again, it gets people talking. And um, again, you're right. Like um, probably another band's not named that. Um, it's it's not like a simple name, you know, and, and um, so a name people remember. Yeah. Well, that's and, what they and, do. <laughs> let me ask you, because you were telling me before we went on there, I was telling you, I, I watched a video for your song, Run and Hide. And I love the fact that... Um, it's got, I think, footage of a movie, um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And share with the people what you're telling me. <laughs> How uh, you well, use footage, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, with, with, with Run and Hide, uh, that was like our strength. We did like three uh, horror theme type singles in a row. It was Run and Hide first, then Bump in the Night, then Mount Sinai. And uh, I just kind of, you know, w with, with the way Run and Hide was, I thought it was we all thought it was an accessible song and it actually ended up getting played on a couple of alternative rock uh, stations and uh, podcasts, which thank you to all those people who played sure. it. 
So I was kind of thinking of just having fun with the music video. So I was like, you know, what we could do instead of doing a performance video or doing a lyric video, maybe take like footage from public domain films that kind of splice them together. Yeah. So, you know, you have the uh, Silent Juggle and Hide in there. You have Night of the Living Dead in there. You have um, uh, Nosferatu in there and uh, Telltale Heart. Yeah. And uh, within the context of the song, the video just ended up, you know, looking pretty cool. And I sent it to the guys. I'm like, what do you think? They're like, yeah, we'll do that. So yeah, again, I mean, um, uh, metal fans typically love horror stuff. So I, I think it's a great fit. And, you know, again, when I was watching the video initially, um, I was looking at the title on the screen. It says, you know, um, run and hide. I think, oh, wait a minute. It's spelled H-Y-D-E. And I start paying attention to what's on the you know, screen. And I'm like, hey, OK, that's that's cool. So, again, you're making people kind of think exactly um, what is this? <laughs> You gotta you gotta pay attention to everything. Now you also um, I was watching a video for the song um, Professor um, Finch. Talk a little bit about that. Alex, go ahead. Oh <laughs> yeah, so that one um, we wanted to write a Christmas song. Okay. But um, we didn't want it to sound like a Christmas song. <laughs> yeah, it so um, it, it had interesting imagery. I was noticing the interest imagery so that's cool wow christmas song metal christmas song i dig that <laughs> yeah yeah so we were we were trying to do like one of these things sort of like um wicked and things like that where you take like the uh the antagonist and kind of tell their side of the story yeah so we did that with the grinch oh, and wow. uh we kind of invented this whole story of him being a normal guy and like why he ended up doing the things he did so that's what yeah. that one's about Another video of your guys that I enjoyed was In the Red, which is basically kind of a, a, a band performance. Um, talk about shooting that, because um, again, that looks like something you would have seen on Headbangers Ball back in the day. Um, looks like it was really professionally shot. And um, I think it, get, if people watch that, they'll have a real idea like, hey, wow, these guys can really get down. I want to go see these guys when they come to my town. Why? Wow, I think that was professionally shot, huh? Well, I mean, it looks like something you'd see on MTV back in the day, you know? Or... Yeah, no, it, it did come out really cool. Um, actually, that was done on our first practice. It was all done with our phones. Yeah, amazing, amazing, yeah. yeah. So well, uh, a friend, wow. Wow. Yeah, a mutual friend of ours, with uh, uh, Alex, um, he uh, took everybody's phone, you know, and we all shot doing our instruments or whatever. George ended up not being at that practice, so he had to do his stuff at home. Yeah. And I just edited it all together, you know? We just, like I said, it was our first practice. And... Um, I told Alex to go out in the hallway and just, you know, you know, sing the lyrics out in the hallway. And that's how we did it. You know, we had some uh, strobe lighting and stuff there, just things to make it look like, you know, we're not practicing in the studio, yeah, yeah. you know. And so, so what what are the plans, guys, once the album's released May 2nd? Um, any plans to perform live? Uh, we're tr trying. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we had some offers to do some shows. Um, we're trying to, because, you know, we're kind of all spread out and it's kind of, Alex has, you know, different work schedule than everybody else too. So it's kind of hard for everybody to get into the room all at once. So once we can have some more practices together, we try to get some show. We wanted to have like an album release show. It's yeah. it's going to happen at some point. So I guess this goes to both Wayne and Lou. You guys can uh, take it separate. But um, I was curious, since you guys do the podcast together, um, What's it like being musicians that get a chance to like interview and talk with other musicians about what they're doing? You know, kind of be on the other side of it, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I, I and it actually helped us too with doing those cover songs because a lot of the musicians that we did have, our, have on our show, we invited them to do uh, some cover songs with us. So that's cool too. But we also get to learn like you know things that they maybe have. Uh, encountered during their time of being on record labels and you know touring with bands and stuff like that so it kind of helps us out to maybe look out for certain things as well you know yeah mm -hmm. and um yeah, and george let's talk about um who are some of your base heroes you know the guys that influenced you to do what you're doing uh probably steve harris from iron maiden billy sheehan who's in wow. the winery dogs now but back then it was talus and mr big um they were the big ones i mean there were a lot of other there's more songs and just hearing certain riffs and whatnot that got me into a lot of it than just specific players yeah, yeah, and it's some some there's some non metal players too. I mean, like Michael Manring's a hell of a of a new age jazz player. Oh my god, yeah. So, yeah. and so I, I was curious when you guys first started um, recording the songs that are gonna be this new album. Um, since everybody was um, it's kind of spread out, do you guys have your own home studios where you record your parts and you kind of all piece it together? How does that work? 
yeah, everybody has their own interfaces and uh, we do everything from, I do my stuff here and this is actually a garage. So I'm recording my stuff here and, and everybody does it from home. And some of us, uh, and, and Mark, he, he's not here, but uh, it was his first time actually doing something like this. So it took him a little time to get used to uh, having to set up, you know, the, uh, we use Reaper and, and an interface. So he didn't really know all that stuff. And it, it, it was a, it was a challenge, but it was fun. You know, everybody's got it down now. I think, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a guy in a suit telling us, no, don't play that. You can't do this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Work with this guy. You know, Alex and George are two guys that I met through uh, Wayne, thanks to Ratsaw Rat Review. And, yeah. you know, we, our personalities meshed well. And, you know, uh, it works well in a band situation, too. You know? Let me ask you, Lou, as far as um, guitar soloing, um, what are we going to get from you? Are we going to get any fiery lead guitar solos on the new album? No, I'm boring as hell. You're not going to, you know, it's like. <laughs> Uh, his parts are the that. worst part of the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to chop off his fingertips, and maybe next time, the oh, next yeah. album will be better. As far as your guitar playing, I mean, are you, you, you a guy that I, I'm assuming cares more about what fits the song as opposed to, you know, just showing how fast you can play? Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, melody, giving something people to remember. Yeah. Not something that's going to make people go, OK, what else does he do? You know, like uh, that was really important to me. And Alex is a great benchmark because him being such a well-versed musician, um, you know, it inspired me to uh, do best. And George was always there just to be like, have confidence in what you're doing and know and know that it's good. You know, yeah, like I mean, it's definitely a, a very, very positive support system within I this mean, band. The best thing I can say about, you know, your band is... Um... You guys definitely um, got your own sound. I mean, and what I mean by that is, um, you, you know, um, you don't sound like um, you're trying to be the next Black Sabbath, the next Iron Man. You just sound like you're trying to be Severed Angel and definitely got a metal sound to what you do. But I think that's a hard thing to do, you know. Thank you. It is. It is and it, it just kind of happened that way. You know, we we're not set out to say we're only playing, you know, this type of metal. We're yeah. just we, there's so many years of, you know, different bands that we listen to you know, from all of us. So it's kind of just all goes into Severed Angel and just makes yeah, our own well, thing. I, I'd like to thank you guys for taking time to do this day. I really enjoyed getting to know you. And I just want to say you are welcome back um, anytime. I'd love to have you guys back. And um, interviews like this are really fun because what I dig, I dig the fact that even Alex can't be on video, but you know what, he's, he's taking part. And I dig the fact that everybody got to say their say, it, and that makes this a real fun interview. Yeah, thank definitely. You. Thank you for having us on. Thanks. Have a great Thank rest of the day. Much. Like I said, we'll we'll be posting an interview next week. I'll be sure to let you know. And I want to give a shout out to our mutual friend, the Lord of PR, for setting this up. Um, thanks, Benjamin. You yeah. guys take thanks, care. Man. I'll be in touch, okay? Bye -bye. All right. Sounds good. Have a Cheers. Good night. Thank you.